remember the battles uh, from the 80s and the Equal Rights Amendment. And when I talk about this, I like to say it's mind-boggling that we haven't passed it already. How could any rational legislator vote no on a, on a resolution that gives women the same rights as men under the United States Constitution? And yet, people have found all sorts and kinds of reasons for voting no. Let's talk about a few of them and we'll get our laughter out of the way and <laughs> then we can move on. First, there were very, they were very worried for a very long time about the fact that the Equal Rights Amendment might allow for gay marriage. I have news for them, it's no longer an issue in the United States of America. Next, they were worried that the Equal Rights Amendment might require the state to pay for poor women's abortions. I have news for them. We've already taken care of that in the state of Illinois. And then they're very worried that we're gonna send women off to the military. And then they're really worried, really worried about same-sex bathrooms. I am shocked that these folks are still talking about this silliness. But we have some hope ahead of us. First, Donald Trump has given us a little help. Because what is going on in Washington has convinced a lot of normal, rational, and I put that in quotes, legislators in Illinois that have been no votes before, that maybe we shouldn't be so anti-woman in the state of Illinois. That maybe what's going on in Washington tells us a story that we need to have our United States Constitution be, be more inclusive. And we've had some other help here in Illinois, and that is that there are a whole bunch of, Demo of Republicans in the Illinois House who have always been no votes who are not running for re-election. Uh. Some of these folks who have said for years, you know, they'll tell me privately, you know, I'm really for that, but I can't vote for it. And I throw things at them and scream and uh, punish them and do all kinds of things. It hasn't helped. But now they say, many of them, that they, they're, they're going to vote for this. And so the dynamics are these. In the Illinois Senate, we need 36 votes. We have 37 Democrats in the Illinois Senate. Not every one of them is prepared to vote for this, but we have a few Republicans willing to help. And I think that Senator Staines is going to be able to pass this in the Illinois Senate. Then we move over to the Illinois House. We have 67 Democrats. We need 71 votes to pass this. Not every Democrat in the Illinois House is prepared to vote for this. And so we need to have probably eight to 12 Republican votes in the Illinois House. I've talked to a lot of them. I don't wanna go through the names, but let me tell you that I think we are just about there. Now, I don't want to predict for you that we're going to pass this because um, after the last presidential election, I got out of the prediction <laughs> business. You can't predict anything anymore in public life. You can't predict anything more in politics. Um, but I do think we're in the best place we've ever been. It's also fair to say that if we don't pass it this spring, it may become very difficult to pass this after the next election. And I'll tell you why, because I like telling you everything I know. We are likely to elect more Democrats to the Illinois House in this election. But the Republicans who are going to replace retiring Republicans are more conservative than the people that they are replacing. Almost uniformly. 
So any of you that might live in a district where you're represented by a Republican House member who might be leaving, you know who the candidates are. And you know that the possibilities exist that as far to the right as you think your legislator is now, your next legislator may be even farther to the right. And, also fair to say, freshman legislators don't like to vote for controversial issues on either side of the aisle. So this is our time to do it. We've got Donald Trump helping us. We have the Me Too movement helping us. We have retiring members of the Illinois House who I think are about to help us. But nothing is, as they say in sports, a slam dunk. We have a lot of work to do. What do we need to do? First and foremost, we each need to call our own legislators, our own senator, our own House members, and not just ask them to vote for this, instruct them to vote for this, urge them to vote for this, lay down in front of a truck until they tell you they're going to vote for it. Uh, because simple phone calls don't work as well as visits, um, but if a phone call is what you're going to do, then it has to be the kind of phone call they hear. This is why postcards don't work as well in moving the minds and hearts of legislators and phone co that phone calls do, and phone calls aren't as good as personal visits. So a little, starting a little bit before the March 20th primary through about two weeks after the March 20th primary, legislators will be home. There is no session for about four weeks before and after the primary. This would be a time that if you want to visit your legislator personally to do it. What's the second thing you should do? The second thing you should do is call all your friends and ask them to call their legislators. This is particularly true for friends who live in Republican districts. There are some Democrats not voting for this. It's a very small number. And I've worked them over pretty well. Uh, and um, I think we've gotten what we're going to get. But the Republicans, there are still quite a few of them that will not commit. And so what we have to do is get them to commit. So calling your friends and having them make the calls is important. We're also doing phone banking out of my office in Skokie. <coughs> Many of you are too far to come to Skokie, but that doesn't mean you can't get together with a local group that might be working on this and help us with phone banking. So in these phone banking uh, situations, what we do is call constituents of these <coughs> House members and Senate members and ask them to call their legislators. We don't call the legislators. We call regular ordinary voters and say, do you know the Equal Rights Amendment is up and it hasn't passed yet and they're appalled because everybody thinks it's already part of the Constitution. <laughs> Didn't we do that 30 years ago, they will say. Or do we really need this now? After all, we passed all kinds of laws and all kinds of statutes. But you can tell them, who's seen the movie Equal Means Equal? Okay, great flick. And what you see in that is that, is that Supreme Court justices as far apart in their philosophy as Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Justice Scalia both agreed that women do not have a place in the United States Constitution. Which means that when there's a discussion of of disparate sentencing or unfair treatment of women, and you ask the court to review it in terms of a discriminatory practice, they don't give it the necessary strict scrutiny they need to because women are not included under the Constitution. So people will say, well, we passed this law, we passed that law, this protects women, that protects women, but nothing protects people like the United States Constitution. That's A, why it's so important, and B, why it's so hard to amend. Additional good news is that just in the last several months, Nevada became the 36th state to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment. You need 38. 
And it looks very much like Virginia is going to do it next. For a while, I thought we might beat them to it. It looks like Virginia is going to do it next. You're shaking your head. All right. So perhaps if they haven't done it, Illinois can help push them over the top. And what we want to do is finally say that Illinois, which is, by the way, the most highly industrialized state that has not ratified the Equal Rights Amendment, we want to say its time has come. We want to say there's an opportunity to do it. It will not be easy, although it ought to be. It will not be um, a walk in the park, although it ought to be. It will require a lot of work from a lot of people. I have been the sponsor of the Equal Rights Amendment resolution in the Illinois House for over 20 years. Now, some say that proves my incompetence. Uh, but this, I hope, not the case. The case is that this has been hard to pass in Illinois. For all of the talk about Illinois being a blue state, what re Illinois really is is one big blue county at the top of a red state. That's what Illinois really is. And so it takes a lot of work. Virtually all of the legislators from um, at least the Chicago land area are for this. Not all, virtually all. But the farther you get away from the center of the city, the harder it gets. And so we need your help, we need your work, we need your understanding as to why. Someone's gonna to say to you when you call, what about the deadline? Wasn't there a deadline? Didn't Congress put a deadline on this? The United States Supreme Court in many cases over the years has said that that deadline is simply ministerial, that that deadline doesn't matter. In fact, the, the United States Supreme Court allowed something to be added to the United States Constitution 200 years after its original passage uh, and so um, that's just a red herring. If somebody says to you, if a legislator says to you, isn't it past its deadline, they're just giving you an excuse for not being a yes vote. You've got to get past that. You've got to get past all these other issues. And if they raise some other issue, bathrooms, military, abortion, whatever it might be, just tell them to actually read the words in the resolution. It says nothing about any of those things. It just says that women are entitled to rights under the United States Constitution. For those that want to raise abortion as an issue, try this. Aside from the fact that we finally passed a bill this year in Illinois that protects women, try this. Ask them if men get abortion. And when they laugh at you and they say no, and then say the women are not entitled to any more rights under the United States Constitution than men are entitled to. So until men are entitled to abortion rights, this doesn't add anything to the rights of women relative to government paying for abortions. It doesn't add any money for women. It doesn't do any of those things. So then some would come back and say to you, well, then what do we need it for? Well, here's why we need it. We needed to make sure the courts give strict scrutiny to discrimination cases, whether it be employment discrimination cases or, or uh, sentencing discrimination cases or any of those types of things. We also need it because the laws that we have passed have not yet caught up with real life. Women still make less than 70 cents on the dollar Women still aren't given all the rights they're entitled to in a domestic relations case. And um, um, women uh, still, in many, many cases, have to get co-signers when they get a loan, co-signers when they uh, lease property or buy real estate. And for all of the talk out there that women and men are treated equally in society, I'm looking around the room and I'm seeing a lot of people who don't agree with that statement. So we know that we have a lot of work to do. 
And we know that to protect women in our society, we need to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment. Illinois is a critical state, obviously, not only just on the numbers, but because we can lead the way to a new round of a few more ratifications. So we can get past 38, get this adopted, and then if there are court cases that have to happen where somebody's going to challenge whether it's too late to do it, then they'll challenge it. And the United States Supreme Court will eventually have to make a decision on that. So I wanted to come here and tell you how important this is to me. I wanted to give you a challenge to do a little work. The timing of this is, as you have heard, that um, we're going to wait till after the March primary, and then there's no session for a couple of weeks. So we're looking at maybe the second or third week of April if everything goes right. Doesn't mean it won't bleed into May. Doesn't mean it won't bleed into veto session later in the year. But our goal would be to get this done in April if we can. And to do that, we need a lot of help. To the extent that any of you make phone calls to people and you hear somebody say to you, yes, please let me know. I'm easy to reach at Rep Lou Lang at AOL. Yes, I still use AOL. <laughs> Rep Lou Lang at AOL is my email. Feel free to contact me if uh, you hear some uh, phony argument from a legislator who's no. I'd like to know what that phony argument is so that I can deal with that legislator in my own special way. <laughs> I have a lot of special ways to deal with those legislators. So um, uh, that's what I came here to tell you. I'm thrilled that you're listening to what I have to say. And please ask whatever questions you have.